Good day, traders. The four-step method to high-performance trading and the free audio program, the seven-step daily routine for high-performance traders, are both free downloads to help you develop the skill set, the mindset, the discipline to master the markets. The link is down below in the box, the description box. They're both free downloads. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading, and today we are going to be talking about... I lost a lot of money until I started to trade this way. And this way for me was to call down the process into a repeatable rinse and repeat formula, not only for each day, but for each week. And that's ultimately what came out of the playbook in the as, much, as, as simplified and explanatory way as possible to reinforce a simple Monday to Friday approach to the markets, but not to determine a direction or to, you know, buy the low or sell the high, but to actually understand when I had the opportunity for scalable, sizable opportunities or setups, or if it was just indeed a session trade for a scalp. And a scalp being a question that is asked, a great question that is asked over and over again is, What's the difference between a scalp and a sizable opportunity? Well, I repeat the phrase over and over again, escalator up, elevator down, if you're shorting. Sometimes it can be the escalator down and the elevator up. But the most important thing that I have been able to do is to have zero stress and a, a simple rinse and repeat method to come to the screen and not focus on an instrument, but focus on best setups. And those setups are 90-10 opportunities. The difference being 50-50 is where you want to buy something that you think is going up or sell something that you think is going down. And you are going to exit based on certain criteria. You're going to risk 1% and get out of the market when your exit criteria tell you to. A 90-10 opportunity is where I have an opportunity to position myself in the market where I have a symmetrical risk reward and the market is about to accelerate into that move and either collapse or explode vertically where I have a tight control on my risk meaning that it's a one bar stop typically so on currencies I've talked about this 15 20 maximum usually oil gold indexes that can be fully managed to in most cases, 25 as a maximum stop loss, 25 pips, because when the market is about to explode and accelerate, it should not come back against me. It should actually capitulate in the direction of the trade or continue to accelerate or move in that direction before it capitulates and blows off and collapses or explodes in the long direction. So just coming back to the process, we talk about the opening range and the initial balance. And just to review a few things from the playbook. I had a trader ask me today to review my glossary of terms, which are in the playbook. Some traders have the playbook, but have obviously not read this first part. The glossary of terms is in there on page five. And on page 40, we talk about the opening range and the initial balance, which happens every single week. And I talked about this, Toby Crable, one of his approaches to the market with, with, uh, he trade opening range breakouts uh, were narrow range days. And coming back to the beginning of the week, that starts our process off and a new weekly template. Now on the community page in YouTube, I have posted uh, my daily sort of, uh, I guess, charts of what is setting up or potentially setting up based on my criteria that I mark off on each one of the pairs. Uh, today we talked about gold, uh, first red down New Zealand dollar, uh, the S&P 500, a day two after three levels of rise, and the high of the week where uh, high bull major resistance was. We talked about the Aussie dollar having four day four longs in the market after yesterday's CPI, Aussie dollar CPI, and three pushes to the high of the week, just entering into the U.S. session window. And we talked about the British pound, day three, from the low of the week. So uh, the low of the week was taken out on Tuesday and reversed 
at the bottom of a 100 pip box that was a failed breakout that started our day count in the opposite direction so Wednesday uh, sorry Tuesday's day one Wednesday was day two and uh, Thursday is day three in a three-day setup model so uh, a qu some questions about that so if Monday is our opening range Tuesday extended that range and formed our initial balance and put in a lower high after our first red day on Monday that now becomes a potential ceiling area. Uh, we had a break in structure in the London session, bro broke of the high and then a lower low. Uh, and so all these are our levels to form a thesis. So for example, we had advanced GDP in the US session today. We may have had an explosive first bounce based on the 15 minute setup right from the playbook again. So I reinforce the major news catalyst first bounce trade needs to have a 15 minute setup so there is a different first bounce model when there is no news on the schedule but we didn't go into that but the first bounce after major news always needs a 15 minute setup that allows us the entry on the first bounce after the news is released so i'll reinforce something that i have repeated over and over again and some traders have asked me um, I'm not, I still don't understand what you mean by every trade is a pump and dump or a dump and pump. Regardless of how you're trading, I, I, I don't care what setup it is or what model or what you've learned from somebody else, everything culminates. Every single successful trade culminates in either a dump and pump or a pump and dump, whether it's a reversal, whether it's a counter trend, everything is pump and dump or dump and pump. And so when we come into a new session, I've talked about defining your consolidations. Now, I'm going to talk about today's gold trade because that was an absolute textbook opportunity for a five-star scalable trading opportunity to uh, size in. And another excellent question was what percentage of size would you put on that trade? Now, I'm going to suggest that this is um, individualized because first and foremost, you need to have the runs on the board and the consistency in your approach to the markets so that you've got the results to back that up. And then once you have a firm grasp of execution and performance under your belt, then you can scale up in size. Until that point, I would focus on the consistency of your daily process and your rinse and repeat trade setups and the results showing up in your account whether that's paper trading or live money trading uh, and the reason why that is is because if you size into something and you don't have that expertise yet or knowledge or com confidence in terms of understanding where you are at in the template that could be the trade that does a lot of damage so when I talk about sizing in 90 if you stick We'll talk about a specific example of understanding exactly what you're doing today based on a, a query from a trader. As I've always said, you can trade in both directions, but it's imperative that you understand if you want to size into something that you're trading in the direction of the underlying bias for the session, meaning that if it has a large range expansion possibility for asymmetrical risk reward, then you, for example, today gold, we have a pump and dump. Uh, some traders went long on the pump. Where it, and, and the question is, is, was this a bad trade? No, but the question I have for you is only you can answer that. So which setup were you trading? Which setup were you trading? So we'll talk about that in a second. So coming back to our, our process, Monday sets the high and low for the week on our opening range. We'll forget about session trades and Fridays and everything else as we've talked about. Monday sets our opening range for the week, our high-low. Tuesday extends that range. We now have day one longs in the market for the new week. That expands our range. And you'll notice that that came off the low of the week. So again, we talk about the 100 pip box. We have a breakout that pulled back inside, pumped up broke through the next 100 pip box and proceeded to trade higher and expand the range on day two. That is our new high and low of the week. 
our new high and low of the week. Day two, the market dumps down into three levels of rise in the new day. On Tuesday, we pumped up through 50, 75, and 100 before collapsing and breaking down from 75. So we have a dump in the U.S. session that collapses, and then the pump back up, one push, two push, and a third push in the Asian session to the peak formation high made in the gap between London and the U.S. session. That was our lower high, that false break that failed and dumped and pumped up in three pushes, three levels, for a high of day sell-off in the Asian session. We then have a market that broke out of the new 100 pit box on the downside and made a lower high and a lower low. They pump it up again, one push, two push, three pushes into double zeros again for the collapse into the end of the London session, into the gap time. That becomes our low of the day. As I said, at 7.59 a.m., that's the low of the day, 7.59 a.m. We're at the bottom of a 100 pip box. The market makes a higher high in the gap time, higher high on the inside, three levels of drop, dumps down into the double zeros at the low of our our initial balance, our opening range from Monday, the failed breakout from Friday's low, right? Coming back to Friday's low, we have our opening range, our initial balance. They dump it down in three levels for an explosive reversal trade on Wednesday. That low of the week now starts our day count because that's our failed breakout. Day one, day two expands the range on the upside. First green day and a low of the day buy opportunity on day three that breaks out of the high of the week. Now coming into today's session, we had a market that again went up three levels of rise from double zeros to 75 in three pushes. One push, two push, three pushes before selling down right into the open of the Europe open session, pumped back up before collapsing in the London window. Again, you'll notice the higher low at 50 in the gap in our second push, culminating in our third push before it broke down. Peak formations are up above the double zeros, and again, the market comes down and makes a low before going into consolidation. That is our low of the day. On Wednesday, we had no major red news. Today, we had advanced GDP at 8.30. We have a broken down market. Broken down market with major red news. There's a possibility we could see uh, vol some volatility and an explosion, an explosion for a first bounce trade, possibly back to the low of the week. That did not eventuate. We saw a market that Broke down in three pushes. We'll go to our smaller time frame. Broke to the low of the day in three pushes. And you'll notice we are in a 100 pip box. A 100 pip box where 50 is the median price of our box. We are in a broken down market. In order for me to sell in a broken down market, I need a pump before I can get in on the dump. We have three levels of rise. We've gone from 25 after the news in the last 15 minutes of the first hour. The next major time frame then is the New York Open. We have one push, two pushes, and a third push to the high in the first 15 minutes of the second hour. We are above double zeros. This reversal of the high bull candle after three levels of rise in a broken down market into the breakout level, into the breakout level where London traders have shorted this market down. Above double zeros is the first opportunity to enter this short trade. We've talked about front side and back side. We don't want to be shorting this on the front side of the move until this market is prepared to break through. 
We then have our New York Open coming on board. New York market opens and proceeds to drop down before pumping back up and engulfing for a first bounce opportunity. Now, first bounce can be used in the same manner as we do in the playbook for major red news after the market opens and there is no other major red news on the calendar. What that means is that from this point on, the market should trade cleanly and purely as there is no other reason now because the market is open, we've had our major red news, that's it, the market is going to trade and, be, and behave as it should based on the criteria that is mapped out. We have a pump up, our next major level is the low of the day. Now if we come back to simple bodies as I've talked about for measuring classical charting principles, one full expansion of this range opens and closes, gives us a minimal target down into the next 100 pip box. Now if we come back to the simple understanding that the high of the week breakout failed, the high of the week breakout failed. I talked about this on the community page. The breakout failed. We have longs triggered in the market. High possibility they could be targeting the low of Wednesday. We know that's where other time frame stops are placed, whether they're breakout stops, uh, stop loss orders, whatever they may be. But the first thing that needs to happen is a pump up back into the breakout level. That's the pump up back up into the breakout level for the dump down. When you understand there is a high possibility that this market will go all the way down to the previous day's low, you do not want to counter trend this market and be looking to bottom feed trying to buy the low. So we had an opportunity for a re-entry when the new hour started. So we have one hour up. One hour down, two hours down, second hour gives us another first bounce opportunity. All this is is a 25 pip pump up, 50 pips from the low. So remember what I talked about? Uh, I've gotten uh, some repeating questions. Uh, what do you mean by strike zones? Go and study the section on day two and how to measure your strike zones. It's in the playbook. It's in the, in the course, in the videos. Measure up from the low of day, 25 to 50 pips. That's the pump up for the dump. So this market's a broken down market. We get our new hour started. This is the third 15 minute bar starting right here for the first bounce again in the new hour for the continuation trade back down into the low of the day. I reinforce the importance of understanding pump and dump and dump and pump. Now, heading into our new day, this has a high 99.9% .9 possibility since we're closing in the next 15 minutes of being a first red day. First red day, I draw my consolidation heading into the close of the day. There's a pump, pump. We may have another pump possibly for a dump. I have no idea, but if it's a first red day opportunity, we have major red news on the calendar tomorrow night, Friday. That's my consolidation high and low. This is the area that I will look for on a first red day for a potential either short trade from a selling opportunity from the high of day. This is not a trade recommendation. This is the process for identifying a possible opportunity tomorrow. Now we could break through this level and trade up three levels into shorts from the US session, no idea. I have no idea. I won't know until we get there because I'm not in the business of predicting. I'm in the, the business of going to the screen to identify opportunities and then watching how price behaves. We had this example on our community page this morning as well. British pound uh, day three from low of week. Yesterday was essentially an inside day. So again, we have the inside day uh, false break or trend trade setups. That's on page 69 in the playbook. And we had broken the high of the inside day and made a lower low. That's our break in structure. And then we had major red news at 8.30 New York time. So no major explosive breakout for a first bounce opportunity. We had a large wick 
Again, essentially a break in structure on the downside, a lower low. And they pumped it up into the New York Open. Now, again, on our playbook, we have talked about the universal entry criteria for all trade setups. Okay, essentially, again, reinforcing that all setups are pump and dump or dump and pumps. And again, on page 29, we have talked about the basic model for all trade setups. So again, this trade gave in the area of, depending on your fill, five-minute chart would have got you 40 pips, no stress, zero heat. Uh, if you got filled on the smaller time frame, you got your 50 pips. So I'm just reinforcing the importance of understanding the process in that it's, you know, I've had traders tell me I sold the high of London and I'm holding on because I think it's going to go all the way down. I am not interested in how many pips. If I sold the high of a day and it drops down 100, I'm locking that in. Uh, and if it's a sizable opportunity, I'm sizing in. Maybe on the comeback in the next session, I will look at it again for a, another trade. But I want to lock in the money. Look at this. That's easy, no stress. Okay, now the larger picture was to get down to the 50 level. Again, coming back to our original thesis, we had a break in structure. This level pumped up. We're in a 100 pip box. The thesis was a minimum of a move down to the midpoint. It was a high of the day, high of the session sell opportunity after a break in structure and a failed breakout. You'll notice where the pump up occurred into the double zeros, but also into the previous day's high, high of the day and our failed breakout from Tuesday's high. So the setups are the same. We can look at yesterday's post on uh, Wednesday. We had day three longs in the market on the Swiss franc, the boring Swiss franc. Go back to the process. We have our opening range on Monday. That sets the high and low for the week. We had a breakout that failed on day two on our Tuesday, which triggered day three longs. And that gave us our failed breakout for our possible opportunity in the U.S. session. We were in a broken down market. We were on the back side of the move. Remember front side, back side. We're now on the back side of the move yesterday in the Swiss franc. And so if we're on the back side of the move and we want to sell, we need a pump up for the dump. We need a pump up before the dump. We had a broken down market. We have a market that gave us a entry position. Again, we'll talk about timing in a second. On our universal criteria, we had an opportunity on the right side of our micro M structure. And talking about timing, this is 10 minutes prior to the New York Open, our first entry, and then right at the New York Open, we have the collapse for a easy, low stress, 30 to 45 pip trade, depending on your fill. But I want to reiterate the importance of understanding the power of being on the back side of the move. Now, if you're on the front side and you're counter trending this, again, the question is, is understand where you, you're going against the grain. We had traders today, we'll talk about that in a second, who went long and got, and got 40 to 50 pips. But the difference is when the market is going to roll over, we can put size in on this particular type of setup. This is an easy, low stress, high probability opportunity to make easy money. A trader asked me today if going long off the bottom, they got... Uh, uh, I think they got their 50 pips. They, they got filled somewhere long in here. Was this a good trade? I can't answer that. I can't answer whether that's a good trade or not. I have to only ask which trade setup were you trading. If you're just looking to buy the low or sell the high, again, the question I have is how confident are you to put size on that or are you just hoping that it's going to go up? Because, again, you're buying against a broken down market. The next candle could come right through and drop and fall away. But when I'm on the back side of the move, when we've broken through and we've pumped up three levels, nothing's guaranteed. But now as this market starts to confirm my thesis and I can add positions in, I can take money out and get back in for the collapse. We had a failed breakout outside of the previous day's high. We now have a broken down market and a pump and dump for the reversal and the possibility now for a measured expansion of that range down. That's the difference. If you're looking for that, you're buying into the breakout. You're buying up into the breakout. 
how much size would you put on that and what setup were you trading? What What is your setup, your playbook setup for that? Remember, I'm looking for rinse and repeat opportunities for 90-10. So I do everything within my power to be patient, to understand the importance of timing. One hour up, second hour opens, pops the top, reverses. Second hour down, one hour down, two hours down, third hour capitulates and begins the reversal. One, two, three. Longer time frame. We have a first red day. I have no idea. This market could scream back up to the high of the week tomorrow. No idea whatsoever. But first red day is a high of day, high of session selling opportunity if it presents. If it presents, we may have other opportunities for large capitulation type trades if this market begins the backside in the new month. Now, another question a trader asked uh, is I've, I've put other daily time frame pictures on there. Uh, what do I look for? Or do I include that too? We're always trading off of daily and monthly weekly levels. Always. That's where the large opportunities occur is when we get other time frame traders into the markets. So, the reason I put the daily charts up is because I can't scroll back with a 15-minute chart without clustering the volume of the, of the candles. This is an easy way to step back and identify. We have month uh, three longs in the market, and we're now culminating in three weeks of rise with one push, two push, first red day today. If it, close, it closes in a few minutes, first red day, and possibly now a break in structure a retest and next week heading into the end of the month we could see some very large moves don't know don't care don't predict I'm just looking for the best setups when they show up and understand what that means I'm looking for opportunities to position myself in the market when there's going to be a collapse or an explosion and then I'm getting out I'm locking in that money and I'm fighting with all my urge to get out and not come back, keep that money and come back tomorrow and do the process again. It's when you keep going back for a second trade the next later today and going to trade this move and trade that move, and catch another move because with all the movement, there's great opportunities and the markets are great. And then all of a sudden you get caught into something and, and it just doesn't behave the way you think. And then all of a sudden now you're in a position where you either have to take a loss and wipe out your gains, take a small loss, but it might be hard because you've had a good run and you don't want to you don't want to take that loss. So you average in or you move your stop or you uh, load the boat because you have wanton disregard because your loss is starting to blow out and you blow out your account. And this is what I don't want to ever happen to anybody which is why, again, I reinforce the process. We are not trying to call the higher the low, ever. I'm never trying to call the higher the low. I'm watching the front side, and when the front side is breaking or broken, the timing window, major red news is all done or off the calendar. We have our next opportunities in New York Open. If you're trading London, London Open. If you're trading in Asia, no major red news. We're at, we need to be at a higher low of the day or the week or the session. Same thing. Previous U.S. session is the high of the day. Low of the day, same thing. Stick to the highest probability opportunities. Today was a very highly scalable five-star opportunity on gold. We had, we'll take a quick look at the S&P. We talked about this market coming up three levels of rise from the low of the week and trading sideways. We had our high bull for possible major resistance that it broke through prior to the open of the U.S. window. And again, I want to point out the importance of understanding the 100 pit boxes. So I get this question again repeatedly. But how about the S&P or the NASDAQ? They, it moves 500 pips in a day. How can that be in a 100 pit box? You're always in a 100 pip box. Always. Always, always, always. The next most important thing to understand is the timing. This market opens at 9.30 New York time. We are in a 100 pip box. We are in a 100 pip box when this market is about to open. We have major red news. 
that has happened already. And they have pumped it up from the bottom 100 pit box and gone up to the top of a box, broken through, and proceeded to auction up prior to the New York Open in one push. Out, so we've already broken the high of the week, two pushes. And then the New York market opens and proceeds for 15 minutes to trade at the high of the day. We get our engulfment for a starter position. 9.40 New York time. Three pushes and an engulfment coming off of the top of the box after three levels of rise. We get our five-minute opportunity at the close, right near the close of our 15-minute bar at the double zeros. Now, again, we talked about front side and back side. Now, on a high momentum trade, as I have said, if I am confident that I'm going to take this later and it's about to collapse the maximum stop on my entry will be 25 pips this market takes the escalator up people are talking about i, I got long in the s p before the market starts because there was you know they were going to take out the high and all this but understand the difference again I'm, I'm talking about understanding the caliber of type of trade this market is going to go vertical and collapse 200 pips straight down in 15 minutes as opposed to being in something for maybe 45 an hour but again the question is how much can you handle size wise with the back and forth where in the collapse I could be adding into this and it's accelerating and behaving as it should locking in money taking the money we clear out the low and walk away. Done. Don't care about this. I'm not trying to buy the low. Sell it again. I mean, you can. But the longer you sit around and trade, the more likely there could be some dangerous activity that happens. Now, the second opportunity on this, if you're convinced that this market now coming off the high of the week is going to collapse, is timing-wise, coming back, we're looking for one hour up one hour down break structure then the pump up 30 to 45 minutes and here we are 35 minutes in 36 minutes in 37 minutes in to the third hour for the collapse and adding to positions on the pump and the follow through collapse so pump and dump dump and pump we broke out of the week high of the week at the open of the session with three pushes 15 minutes Understand again, 15 minutes at the high, then the collapse. That hour closes down. The new hour opens up, pumps up into the breakdown. 30 to 45 minutes for the collapse and the follow through in the new hour for 150 pip drop through the low of the day. Timings and levels. Understand where the bias is for the easy, low stress money. Have a process to understand the day count. Understand where you may just be in a session scalp or when you have the opportunity for a sizable opportunity to scale into. Again, keep it simple, traders. Tons of great feedback. Keep it simple. Keep it going. Keep it growing. Step back. Look at the bigger picture. Understand the templates. And may the markets go with you.